How did the theory that orchids like to be root-bound come about? Just wondering. As in nature, other than natural obstacles, the roots are free to ramble all around with no constraints. I love this question from Debbie Downs so much because it emphasizes how many phrases are commonly stated, but on closer scrutiny, they do not make sense. Because quite rightly, Debbie Downs followed the question up with, in nature, other than natural obstacles, the roots are free to ramble all around with no constraints. So let's make sense of this statement. Orchids like to be root-bound, aka potted up in smaller pots. Let's break it down and put it into perspective to get a better understanding of what does that even mean and why would it make sense in some specific cases. Notice I'm not saying in all cases. So orchids like to be pot bound or have you heard it formulated like this? Orchids like to be in smaller pots. Well, I'm here to tell you that they do not like to be pot bound, neither do they like to be in smaller pots. Epiphytic orchids like to be on branches of the trees, and if that is not possible, then translate that to epiphytic orchids like to be mounted. And if it is at this stage that you have all the information you were looking for, thank you so much for being here. Please give this video a thumbs up and a subscribe, and maybe stick around to find out what these common statements actually mean. Because I'm going to translate these common statements and make sense of them based on what is actually going on. This way you can decide for yourself how big your pot needs to be for your way of growing orchids, as well as what is best for your lifestyle. First of all, what this statement is, I hope anyway, it is the human interpretation that orchids need to be secure in the pot so that root tips are not at risk of getting damaged and their growth progress is not at risk because of abrasions when handling the pot. The pot bound statement has nothing to do with anything except that chances of the orchid being more stable in a small pot for the sake of the new roots are higher. So what we have to keep in mind is the stability of the orchid in the pot when repotting and while the root system is not yet established, the orchid is loose in the media, you really need to stake or support the orchid in such a way that the risk of abrasions is limited. Remember that we also have to keep in mind roots that would start branching with root tips in the media and not just what we see at the surface. Another breakdown of that statement is the following. More often than not, the orchids being referred to as the ones that like to be pot bound or in a smaller pot are dendrobiums. Potting a dendrobium into a smaller pot ensures that the pot will dry out faster if the orchid is one that needs a drier winter rest. The size of the pot equals how quickly will the pot dry out. But if you're in a climate where there's hardly any humidity, you will be hard pressed to keep the orchid happy in a small pot because your watering schedule will be off the charts during the growing season just because of that claim of potting XYZ orchid up in a small pot. The need for any orchid to be drier during a certain time of year is because of culture and your environment determines the size of your pot, not because the orchid likes to be pot bound. A larger pot can keep the root system wet for too long if you grow in an environment with high humidity and that is the scenario in which a smaller pot would make sense. Not because there's any preference for the orchid being pot bound. Before I continue with other breakdowns of the statement, yes there's more, please give this video a thumbs up a share would be greatly appreciated, as well as would you be so kind as to subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much. Now, I can see why the statement is also backed with the orchid will not bloom unless she is pot bound. Well, let's analyze that claim. Because the same orchid will bloom if mounted with the roots growing everywhere, and it will only bloom when the orchid is mature enough to do so and has grown enough roots to support the blooms. Usually, when an orchid is pot bound, the orchid also has has had time to settle in and mature in the pot. The statement that XYZ orchid will only bloom when pot bound translates into, it is possible that after several years, the orchid has matured. If you then pot her up into a larger pot and she doesn't bloom for you in the following year, that is not because the pot is larger and she is no longer pot bound, but some orchids take a break from blooming after the stress of a repot, after the stress of root ball disturbance, and they will focus on structures and new roots before being strong enough to sustain blooming again. It may coincide with the orchid being pot bound again, that she blooms again, but that would be mere coincidence because the same orchid on a mount, if blooming size, with roots growing everywhere, will bloom year in, year out when given the right care. 
You see, as per the example of slipper orchids, very pot-bound slipper orchids will not bloom until they undergo the stress of a repot, which also provides more space, and all of that will have them back in bloom again on their next bloom cycle. And on top of that, these are water-loving orchids and should not be left to dry out. Eventually, smaller pots will also create issues for orchids like these. Please know that I have addressed the size of the pot based on a wet, dry, organic media culture. Consider an orchid maturing in a pot that is far too big for it, but you grow in inorganic media and you don't have to disturb the orchid as much, well, the orchid will either be with consistently wet roots if you're growing in a semi-hydroponic setup, or if you're just using inorganic media but implementing a wet-dry cycle, then the size of the pot is of no importance either. In summary, if you can grow your epiphytic orchids mounted, then that is the perfect way to grow them, but if you have to grow your orchids potted up, then consider your environment, your lifestyle, how much time have you got to water orchids in small pots to keep them happy? But the most important takeaway that I hope you get out of this video is secure your orchid in the pot in such a way that she is solid and stable to protect new roots and branching root tips. That is the bottom line, not the size of the pot. Little food for thought, just to put it out there, some orchids are super top heavy and in a small pot they will fall over on a regular basis, which will be of no help to any roots in the pot. So, if you have such orchids that are top heavy and your humidity is high, making the watering workload a lot less demanding for you, then go for a larger pot than the small size, but place some rocks at the bottom to ensure that the orchid stays on the shelf and doesn't fall over on a regular basis. The fact that you have a material crocking the base of your pot that is not absorbed absorbing water will also ensure that your pot doesn't stay wet for too long based on the orchid's culture. And if you are in a very dry climate with little to no humidity and you don't want to be chasing your orchid every single day with water when she is in active growth because she will be that demanding, then by all means pot the orchid up in a normal sized pot that fits your lifestyle. Eventually the orchid will be pot bound and then we can do the whole thing all over again. <laughs> And you know what? She may get pot bound, but she's still not blooming size yet. I hope this video was helpful, gave you some insights and possibly makes your decision process a lot easier without the constraints of having to think of they like to be in small pots and you dreading the growing season because you cannot keep up with the watering. Thank you so much for watching. Have yourself a beautiful day on the condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.